Hi and welcome to South Bend TV. You're joining us in the studio today with Ross McGrain, local funny man, comedian and radio DJ. Um, thanks for being here today, Ross. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Um, wanted to get you in and just talk about stuff that you're doing. You're, um, you're getting a bit of a name for yourself in the local comedy circuit. Uh, a little bit, I guess, yeah. I suppose that was a good thing or a bad thing. I guess for PR it's good, yeah. Yeah, I've been gigging for four years now, but I've been doing, like, in the comedy industry for over 13 particularly in South End, sort of running gigs and stuff. Nice. You look a little young to have been doing it 13 years. You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually 47. I just call it on a daily basis. No, yeah, uh, yeah I, started, I set up my first gig when I was uh, 14, so it's been a... That was at the Empire Theatre, which they're actually just ripping to pieces as we speak. Yeah, <laughs> but you, you can, can actually hear, hear the, the ghost of my comedy past <laughs> uh, fading away. Uh, but yeah, I, I put, I, when I was in, I, I went to school at Cecil James in Southend uh, and we did a business project, which was like a nationwide thing where we have to set up a real business and like, other people in the class were like, making candles and key rings. And my dad was a comedy promoter in the 90s and I was obsessed with stand up. So we set up a comedy night at that theatre and Mickey Flanagan opened, so that gives you the kind wow. of... Yeah, I mean, he obviously hadn't made it by that point, but he opened, um, and Lee Hurst, who was the bald bloke, they think it's all over, all that, all those times ago, he closed. We made a lot of profit, and then, yeah, once that, once we left school, I set up Funny Bunnies at uh, Seymour's in South, which now Dick Levine's, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. It's going really well. Good. That's good to hear. You've um, you've supported some quite big names so far, though, haven't you? Uh, yeah, well, I've supported uh, Russell Kane on his like on a few tour dates in 2015, um, and got to play the Chris Pavilion, obviously with him, which was a huge yeah, deal nice. For me. Right, and I, I think like, when you do like once you've done the cliffs, at least then when I'm old and sitting in my pants and my grandchildren, they're like, I was very good once. <laughs> 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 you know, so I was, other than just doing gigs above pubs and stuff, at least it gives me a little bit of credibility to tell my ch children when they're older. Uh, but yeah, that was obviously a fantastic experience, and um, I've, I've, I've like opened at loads of the pro clubs with big names like Joe Brand and Sean Walsh. And, oh, I love Joe Brand. Yeah, she's brilliant. Really yeah, really funny. good. So what have you got coming up that we can come and see locally? Uh, I've got quite a few bits actually. I run a, a monthly open mic new material night at the Alex in South End upstairs. It's been running for a couple of years now, and that's uh, so that's actually a free entry gig. We just take a bucket donation on the way out. Um, but that's mainly for like brand spanking new comics. I use that actually to feed the more pro nights that I'm doing and sort of see new acts. Okay. Um, we get a lot of established acts come down and try new material as well. So yeah, that's that's basically where I try all my new bits. If there's and... someone watching the fancies ago, can they come down? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> just you know, if you've got something to say, can't promise people are gonna laugh at you, but just come down and yeah, yeah, yeah have a punt. But um, yes, yeah, so we've got that. That runs on the first Sunday of each month. I've got uh, a night at Babouche in Leon C. Oh, this is a new swanky restaurant. I've seen this. It is, yeah. It li literally looks like someone's put a grenade in Lily Savage and it exploded all over <laughs> the place. It's, it's like, but in a much in a classy way. Um, yeah, she's uh, yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's beautiful in there. Stunning. Bit bit. I've got handles on it to lift the toilet up. Oh wow! Blow my mind that's, away. That is swish. That's how the other half live. Um, so yeah, that's that, <laughs> that runs on the last Thursday of each month. So we've got uh, the next one's on the twenty third of March. Uh, featuring Justin Panks and myself, that be a, and Justin's awesome, so that'd be a really good show. The day after that, at the Parking Palace Ballroom, is a is a, 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 a bigger comedy event, I guess, um, featuring Charlie Baker, who's been on all sorts of panel shows, and uh, Paul Perry as well, who's one of my favourite comics on the circuit. Uh, I'll be hosting that as well. And Parking, what date's that? That is the 24th of March. Okay, and there's some tickets left? There's a few, yeah, a handful. They're £25 each, uh, but you get a, a fish and chip dinner with that, and there's a, there's a disco fish and afterwards. Dinner. Disco. You sold me at the fish and chips. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's quintessentially South End. Very it? nice, very nice. Sounds good. So you mentioned earlier that your dad used to run some comedy nights. Did he do comedy as well? Uh, he had. He dabbled. He dabbled. Yeah, he dabbled. Comedy runs in the family, doesn't it? A little bit. In that, in that sense, yeah. I mean, my well, my dad used to run Churchills uh, in the nineties and early noughties. Right. So before it was obviously Monge Two now. Um, but yeah, a long time ago, that was an incredibly successful bar slash club. Mm. Um, and he was the manager and promotions manager there, and he set up. It was the, actually the only, other than the Joker Club at the Cliffs. So I'll get onto that in a bit. But that it was the only alternative comedy night, sort of this side of outside of London, really. And he had uh, everyone who's anyone played that gig at some point or another. Lee Evans played it twice. Harry Hill, Frank Skinner, Angus Deaton. Yeah. Uh, so 
like back back then, the only way you could watch, I call it alternative comedy, like alternative being what we're used to now, I guess. Mm. But back then, the only kind of comedy to get on the telly is like your Russ Abbotts and yeah. Bruce Forsyth, like your mainstream mm. comedy. So, yeah, back then, the only way you could watch alternative comedy about real stuff from real people was uh, at 11 o'clock at night on BBC Two. It was a stand up show, yeah. and we, my mum used to tape that religiously for my dad. And then I used to sit there and watch it right. and then regurgitate all the swear words <laughs> at seven years old. And, but yeah, I was just obsessed with it. My dad used to smuggle me in the club to, to watch so the So you got to see all these Yeah, these I've been really fortunate yeah, to meet pretty much all my heroes in comedy. Well, you know. So when did you decide that you wanted to do it? That age. That, that yeah, age. whenever you asked me, all through primary school, secondary school, what do you want to do when you grow up? It was, I want to be a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Um, and here you are sitting down and here I am sitting down <laughs> with my £7 H&M hoodie on it's going really well <laughs> but um, comedy running in the family just coming back to that briefly yeah. because you you did um, put a video out a little while ago and it was actually your daughter Lexi wasn't yeah. it who's not yet turned two no, but has probably made more people laugh than there's you, no probably about it, Hayley, let's face it, shall we? I think the biggest gig I did was the Clips Pavilion, that was 1,600 people laughing at the okay. things that I said. Uh, that video is it's sitting on around 10 million views at the moment. So the video that Lexi did has over 10 million Yeah, views. well, I filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> She's nothing without me. <laughs> and you can hear your voice in the video. Yeah, um, yeah. Should we have a little look at that now? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Should we go and have a bath? No. Let's go and have a bath. No, no. Why not? Let's just go and have a bath. No. It's fun, it's relaxing. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? I don't like it. You don't like it? Why bath. don't you like it? Bath. You don't like the bath? What about the bubbles? Bubbles. Do you want some bubbles? I like it. Should we go and have a bath with some bubbles? No. Just a quick bath. No. <laughs> Come on, just just one. Like it. You don't. Why not? Not. Why not? Like it. You don't like it. Then man. What about a bath? No. Just a quick one. No. Let's go and have a quick bath. No. <laughs> Have a quick bath. Come on. No. Come on. Like it. Like it. What about? Like it. Should we have an egg? Egg. Do you want an egg? Egg. You want an egg? Okay. That was it. Um, well, you must be very proud. Yeah, I mean, look, that she is such a character, and I'm not just saying that because she's my daughter, but you know, she's she's just one. She's got a, an excellent vocabulary. Um, for her age, and because she's still bald, it makes her look a lot younger than what she is. So, like, people are like, What she is does. this bionic? Like, it looks like Vern Troyer having a conversation. Um, but, like, so I mean, she, she does stuff like that all the time, and it does crack me up. And I've just never been very good at like, getting my phone out and recording yeah. these things. But you but, have started now. Oh, now? Yeah. I can't but the thing, I, I don't think I've seen her through anything other than a screen for the last. <laughs> no, I mean, she, yeah, it was just. She, she does she does actually like baths, but th this particular occasion, she just weren't having none of it. And I, I filmed it to show Holly, my, my fiance. She was like, "Well, I've got to film this conversation because it's hilarious." And I put it on Facebook, and like, I mean, I've got a, I've got quite a, a, a reasonably big following on Facebook anyway, so it, picked, it generated quite a few yeah. likes and stuff like that, and people were sharing it. Um, and then it was that it was well, I, I can't take all the credit for it really because my sister sent it into Pretty Fifty Two. Right. My sister Georgia. Uh, Pretty 52 is a page that's affiliated, it's part of the Lab Bible group. And they messaged me and asked if they could share it. I was like, yeah, I guess that's, you know, that's fine. So they shared it. Uh, and then overnight that hit like 1.5 million views. <laughs> and then Nine Gag, which is another huge page with like 35 million followers, they shared it. Um, and then it's been, now it's been plagiarised and ripped off and oh, it's all, just all over the internet. It's, I mean, it's crazy how quickly that moves. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to be riding on her coattails a lot longer than I thought she'd be riding on mine. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to get my Twitter handle like tattooed on her head or something. <laughs> but there is a YouTube video, isn't there? Now, so you can follow uh, Ross and Lexi. Um, yeah, well, like, 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 so we have lots of these funny things happen quite often in our lives, and um, I'll always try and coax her to, you know, doing the funny stuff. So yeah. then, since I mean, it has been, it's been, been a bit overwhelming. Like you find, my phone hasn't stopped, and obviously it's, it's driven loads of people to my page, which is awesome and yeah. great for the profile and that. 
but it, it has genuinely been like a real lovely experience going through the car. Like I, I think out of all those views, and I mean, I was trolling, looking, where's the negative? I'll crawl your eyes out. You know, going through <laughs> every comment. I found two negative comments. Yeah. Uh, until it got shared on the Daily Mail's website. <laughs> <laughs> Standard. But, or, 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 yeah, but I mean, either way, it's just been really lovely uh, and inspiring, I guess, reading all these, seeing how many people yeah. she's she's made laugh. Yeah, so. well, she's adorable. I've watched it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a few people have said they watched it more than once. But yeah, you can. We've got a, we've got a YouTube channel now, so you can. Uh, Head up to YouTube, just type in Lexi and her dad. And Lexi and her dad. You'll find it. We can't have a, a personalised URL yet because we're not at 100 subscribers. That's just our YouTube. So subscribe. Right. Subscribe. subscribe. Mm-hmm. Need like another 10. So, how can we get in touch with you um, and where can we see you online? Uh, well, Facebook's probably the, uh, the. I'm most active on Facebook, I guess. So, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Ross McGrain comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Ross McGrain. You can follow me on Instagram, the Ross McGrain. There's one other Ross McGrain I know of, and he put video. He, he's in Ireland somewhere, and he put on. Uh, he was putting up, uploading videos of him throwing Mentos and Coke bottles at buses, <laughs> <laughs> throwing Mentos, Mentos and Coke, oh. chucking at buses and uploading <laughs> videos. I was like, we need to get him down the rankings. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the Instagram is the Ross McGrain, uh, Snapchat Ross McGrain. Ross McGrain, <laughs> small C, big G. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here first. Ross McGrain. <laughs> I'm also on Funky Essex every morning, Monday to Friday, doing the breakfast show. I do that as well. He's everywhere. You're not going to be able to escape him now. That's it. Ross McGrain, your life. Um, yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming down. That was fun. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Cheers.